Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations where we tackle everything DIY and today we're gonna unbox the Makita Trim Router and put it to the test by showing you five beginner ways that you can be using the router in the workshop today. I purchased this piece of kit from Total Tools for $379. Let's go ahead, get it unboxed and get to work. All right, in the box comes the actual router itself. We've got a plunge base for the router. We've also got a tilt base for the router and then a whole bunch of different accessories. We've got a laminator bit here, which I think could be quite useful. And we've got an edge guide, which I think will be really helpful. A different kind of handle, not sure if I'll use that. And we've also got a couple of different dust collection options as well. Now the goal of today's video is to try and increase your knowledge on how to use the router. I know so many people out there that are terrified of the router. And yes, they are loud and they are powerful. And like all power tools, they need to be treated with respect. But with a little bit of know-how and a little bit of knowledge, they shouldn't be feared because they are a tool that can really increase the quality of your woodworking and take your woodworking to that next level. So without further ado, let's get to the first way that you can be using a router. The first way we're gonna use the router is to create some joinery and common methods of joinery are rabbits and dados. Now, what is the difference between the two? A rabbit is a rebate that is cut on the edge of a workpiece and a dado is when you're cutting a cutout through the workpiece that is not on the edge. We're gonna do both of those today. Now for router bits, we're going to use a straight router bit. So let's get the straight bit into the router first and then we can talk about how we're gonna set up for the cut. First off, we're going to remove the base plate so we can get access to the collet. We'll drop in our six mil straight bit and start to tighten down the collet. When you get this rotating here, there's a little locking nut on the edge that you can push in to lock the collet in place. And we're gonna pull the router bit out just ever so slightly so that it is nice and clear of the collet. And then we can use our wrench to tighten it down all the way. That's nice and tight, not going anywhere. And we can put our base plate back on. We're gonna start off with a dado here through the middle of my workpiece. I've got my straight router bit just ever so slightly sitting out from the base of the router and using the light in my router, I am going to line up my router bit on the mark that I have made on the workpiece and put my clamping guide into place. Once I've got this all square, we'll clamp it into place and get ready to make the cut. Now it is important to note that when you're using a router bit without a bearing, you really have a guide in place. You don't really wanna be using the router freehand as they have a tendency to get away from you. Now in saying that, when I get to the rabbits, I'm gonna set my guide in place and then move my router around to clear out the material. So there'll be a little bit of practice going freehand. I've got my piece all clamped down, so we're ready to make our first cut. To get a great cut and not put too much pressure on the router bit, it's best to make the cuts with a couple of passes, depending on the depth of the cut. Now that we have our dados cut, let's move to the rabbits. I've marked how thick the plywood is and I've set my guide in place and I'm gonna remove half the thickness. When using the router, you wanna make sure that you've got a firm grip on it and pay attention to the direction that you're using the router. The router bit will spin in a clockwise direction and we want it to be biting into the timber. So if we're using it on the outside of a workpiece, we wanna be running in an anti-clockwise direction. And if we're using it on the inside of a workpiece, we wanna be working in a clockwise direction. Now the last cut we need to make is a rebate in the bottom of our pieces here for our bottom panel. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the edge guide that comes with the router and use that as our guide and set it so that the router bit is showing only three mil, which is the thickness of our material and go ahead and make the cut. The edge guide that came with the router works really well and now that we have all the pieces of our box cut, we can get to gluing.
The box is out of glue up and it looks fantastic. Not only have we improved our joinery method, but it's also nicer to look at and way stronger than using some glue and screws and butt joints. Now with our box mostly complete, we can move on to the next great way to use the router, which is probably what it's most commonly used for and that is edge profiling. Now there are hundreds of different edge profiling bits out there, but I reckon the two common ones are a roundover and a chamfer and we're gonna try both of those out today. Edge profiling bits have bearings on them so they are designed to run along the workpiece without a guide because the bearing will do the work for you. And I should note, any of the router bits that you see me using today, I will leave links in the description below. Note that those links do help out the channel and support me as I do get a little bit of a kickback from them when you make a purchase using those links. Now I've got the roundover set up in the router. Let's go and get set up for the cut and we're gonna round over the outside of the box to make it nice and safe to handle. Our edge profiling is all complete and it's such a nice way to style and class up the box and give it that finishing touch. Now that we've nailed our joinery and our edge profiling, let's keep moving and have a look at other ways that you can be using the router. Another great use for the router is using it to create biscuit joints and this eliminates the need for an entire tool in the workshop. Biscuit joints are really helpful when you're gluing things up and you're trying to get them to align. They're particularly helpful when you're trying to glue timber into a panel. It uses a particular router bit which is called a biscuit cutter and it has a bearing that runs along the workpiece and creates grooves in both of the workpieces. Then you can take the biscuit and insert the biscuit connecting the two pieces together and that helps them align top to bottom. Now when it comes to the trim router, you can use the router bit with the traditional base. However, you have to have the base on the router first because the router bit won't fit through the hole of the base and it's a little bit tricky to get tightened down. You've got to use both the spanners to do that. Alternatively, you can use the plunge base, which is what we're going to do today. So we'll go ahead and get the router set up and then we can talk about particularly how we're going to cut our grooves and put it to the test and see just how well does it align the two pieces of timber. We've got our two pieces of MDF here and we're going to line them up how we want them to glue up. And we've got our biscuits here which are going to go across the joint. So using a pencil, I'm just gonna mark across both of the work pieces where I wanna cut those grooves and then I can get the router set up for the cut. I've set the router bit depth to be as close to the middle as I can get it and with the bearing running along the work piece, you can easily cut a slot into the timber. On the front of the router base is a center line and this is helpful if you match this line with the line on the workpiece and get consistent slots on both workpieces. If you move the router 30 mil from the line drawn, you'll have the perfect slot for the biscuit. And just like that, our biscuit joints are all cut and you can go with either method. You can cut the slots just for the biscuits or you can cut a groove along the entire workpiece. I reckon you're better off using one method on one side of the timber and the other method on the other side of the timber just to keep those stress levels low when you're gluing up. You can grab your biscuits and put them in the biscuit slots and then you can slide the next piece on and you only have to be worried about aligning left to right and you've got yourself a solid joint. I should note, biscuits are not gonna add strength to your joint, but they will help keep everything aligned top to bottom, which like I said before, super helpful if you don't have a jointer or a planer. This is the method that I am gonna be using when I am gluing up my dining table, which if you are watching this video and that video is already out, I will leave links in the description below and a card up the top so that you can go and check it out. But I think this is a great piece a kit and this router bit should be added to your arsenal if it's not already. Let's keep moving and have a look at another way that you can be using the router today in your workshop. As woodworkers, we generally start out by making squares and rectangles and a step up from that is cutting circles. So today I'm gonna to show you a really quick jig where you can cut circles using the trim router. You're just gonna need a thin piece of plywood, mine is 12 mil, and it just needs to be wider than the router base itself. In terms of router bits, we're going to use the good old straight bit to cut the circle, but we are also going to use a V bit. This is not 100% necessary, but recently I was watching Vic from Down Under Woodworks who made a circle cutting jig for his his router a little bit more involved than the one we're going to make today but this router bit was really helpful in terms of finding the center of the jig so we will use that in a little bit but let's go ahead and get the router mounted to the plywood and then we can talk about how we're going to cut circles. 
The first thing I need to do is remove the base plate from the router as I'm going to use this to trace where the mounting holes need to be. Placing the base plate on the plywood as close to the centre as I could get it, I could mark where I needed to drill my holes and using a force snip bit a little bit bigger than the screws, I could drill down leaving just about 5mm of plywood left. You don't want to drill the whole way through. I could then finish the holes off with a small drill bit for the screws to pass through. The holes are all drilled in the plywood so this is now ready to be mounted and when you're using jigs like this you're not going to mount them with the base plate, you're going to leave this off. And something to note, I don't know if all routers are like this but with this particular router, now without the base plate there are two screws that sit proud which means I can't sit it flush on the plywood, it rocks. Now as far as I can tell these screws are only there for when you're attaching certain accessories, they don't need to be here for this particular operation. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those so that I can flush mount it to the plywood, get it all attached and then we can move to cutting circles. This is where the V-bit is a great idea. Using the V-bit I plunged a little into the timber. This gives me the center of the router and a point to mark the center line just in case the router is slightly off center on the plywood. With the router removed and using the mark, I drew a line down the length of the plywood on both sides. Before mounting the router back onto the plywood, I used a large forstner bit and that V-bit mark to drill out the hole in the center for router bits to pass through. I've got the router mounted back on the jig with the straight bit in ready to go. But before we get to the fun of cutting circles, there's a couple of important things I want to note. This jig is designed to be used with the same size router bit each time. Just because you're going to make your marks and you're going to drill some holes and you want them to be consistent over time. When it comes to marking the diameter, you want to be marking from the inside of the router bit so that when you're marking the diameter, the size of your circle is what you're expecting it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of my common diameters of circles that I generally cut marked up. And the beauty of this jig is you can always add to it. So we'll get those holes drilled and then we can get our circle cutting on. This is where the line you have drawn comes in handy. You just need to measure from the router bit down and mark where you need to drill your holes. I made a mark every 50 mil and on the top side of the plywood I would mark how big of a circle that will create. Now time for some fun. I use a short nail to go through the plywood and into the piece I'm going to cut. The nail doesn't go all the way through as this saves and creates a good side of the workpiece. When it comes to cutting the circle, I like to do a light pass first to make sure that the circle is in the right spot. I will then do three or four passes to cut through the 20 mil of timber. You want to be moving in an anti-clockwise direction and always have a hand on the router or the jig. I'm gonna be honest with you, cutting circles is fun and it's a little addictive. Well, cutting circles definitely is a dusty job, but sawdust means progress. And just in a couple of minutes, you can knock off the circle cutting jig and be cutting circles. So let's keep moving. There's one more way I wanna show you that you can be using your trim router today in the workshop. The last way I'm gonna show you how to use the router today is using a template or patterning router bit. These guys are really helpful to have in the workshop. They operate with a bearing that will run along your template or master workpiece and then duplicate that shape into the piece that you're cutting into. Really helpful when you're trying to cut shapes, say something like this, you can take your time to refine the master shape and then duplicate this over and over again using the same router bit. Also really helpful for things if you're making a box or something like that where you've put your back panel on slightly oversized you can come back through with this guy and trim it to be exactly the same size as the box also really helpful if you are going to produce products or create things over and over again you might want to take the time to create that template and then every time you need to make that product you can pull the template out with your router bit and know that it's going to be exactly the way as you first made it and designed it so let's go ahead and get this router bit into the router and then we can talk about the particulars of the router bit and duplicating our workpiece 
When it comes to router bits, you've got a couple of different options. You've got the one like I'm using here, which has a bearing at top and bottom. This is a really versatile router bit as you can use either bearing, but the other one does need to be proud of the workpiece. It's got a really nice long cutter head and this bottom bearing is removable, which is really helpful in certain situations. Now the other option to this is a router bit where the bearing is only on the top or on the bottom, but the big drawback of that is you might find yourself in the workshop where you can only put your template on one side of the workpiece, which is different to the router bit that you have. This will get you out of that spot of bother. Now even though it does have a really long cutter head, I really wouldn't recommend cutting anything thicker than around about that 20 mil mark. Anything thicker than that, you really should be using a half shank router bit with a larger router. Now that I've got this fitted into the router, let's get to duplicating. The first thing you're going to want to do is put your template onto the workpiece and trace it out with a pencil. We are going to remove the bulk of our workpiece with a jigsaw just to take off the pressure off the router bit, but we want to stay at least say five odd mil away from the line and then we can come back through and flush it up with the router bit. This is where the magic starts to happen. The bearing runs along the template and the cutter cuts the workpiece below matching the template. You just want to keep an eye on the router to ensure the bearing is always running on the template and doesn't move at all. The closer you cut with the jigsaw to the line without cutting the line, the easier the templating is as the router bit is under less stress. You can use double-sided tape to stick the template to the workpiece, which is the way to go if you're going to be using a router table, but I prefer to use clamps if possible. I just make sure that I always have one clamp on the workpiece and move one clamp at a time so the pieces don't move. And just like that, you can take your master template and duplicate it over and over again. A really helpful router bit to have in the workshop. Its biggest drawback though is that you can't do internal 90 degree corners. Obviously with the router bit being circular, that is going to be difficult and something you should note when you are designing and planning on using the template router bit. Now overall, when it comes to the Makita trim router, I absolutely love it. I love how versatile it is and how quick you can switch from the fixed base to the plunge base. I love that you can turn a light on and you can actually see what you're doing. And the bit changeover in this is a dream compared to the Ryobi. With the Ryobi, I would have to use a towel or something to get the router bit out. It was forever getting stuck. This one, as soon as it's unlocked, the router bit comes free really easily. A couple of things I don't like about this one. I don't like the adjustment knob here on the plunge router. I find it fiddly with my fingers and it constantly hitting the router. And if you're wanting to plunge its full depth, you have to have this quite high. So that's just something I don't love. I also don't love the dust collection. It's virtually non-existent, but I think that could be a router thing as opposed to a tool thing. So those attachments really aren't that helpful. And I was hoping the uh, dust collection was going to be better because that is something that I'm focusing on in the workshop. Now, when it comes to battery life, I am using one and a half amp hour batteries. They do not last very long. I think this tool is designed to be used with something that is three amp or higher. Also, my batteries that I'm testing with are very old. So it could be more of a me problem as opposed to a tool problem. I've got bigger batteries on order, so hopefully that will solve that problem. But it is something to note if you're looking at purchasing this tool, go with a three amp or a five amp battery. Now, overall in this video, I hope you have found the information helpful. And for those looking to get into the router ring, I hope that you have found some confidence in this video to go out in the workshop and try some of those techniques that I've shown you today. Now, if you have liked this video, help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons, and I'll see you on the next one.